Hello. How you doing? I'm here uh, today outside of New York. This ain't no uh, Brooklyn, I'll tell you that. I'm actually in Florida. I'm in Florida, sunny Tampa, Florida, to do a, uh, a dark side of Tampa, Florida video. That's right, there's more to this town when it comes to dark tales than just DUIs and people eating other people's faces while high on bath salt. So that's a pretty good story. First of all, Lucy, how are you? Well, that's, you know, a little extreme. I don't think anyone really says that here, but uh, not too far from it. Depends how far out of the city you get. But uh, yeah, before we start, guys, check out the Patreon. That's a huge help. That's how I fund these things. There's some extras on there. Uh, Lucy, what do you think? Should people check out the Patreon? Oh my God, if you haven't checked out the Patreon, you are missing out on the best part of life. Well, it doesn't get much better than that as an endorsement. Uh, you're not living. If you haven't checked out the Patreon and helped out to fund these things, that's how we're going to grow, baby. There's extras on there. There's a podcast. There's, uh, you know, extra ad-free videos. There's book recommendations, movie recommendations. You can take a freaking college course through that thing. Monthly AMAs. Monthly AMAs, all kinds of things. So check out the Patreon because I ain't getting no, you know, Tropicana uh, endorsement deals anytime soon, nor do I really want them, to be honest. But... Uh, Anyways, also to like and subscribe to the video. Uh, if you watch more than one of these videos, you know what's coming. Uh, that being said, Lucy, we got a lot of dark stuff to cover. Uh, yeah. Not the least of which is this dead tree. Murder tree. Murder tree. Look at it. Terrible. Yeah. Anyways. Uh, by the wind. Yeah. By the wind, by the water, by the elements. Uh, you know, they'll get us all eventually. <laughs> is that dark? We got to start this. Hey, little disclaimer, guys. It's going to get dark. This is a dark video, and so, uh, you know, buckle up. What do you think, Lucy? Should we start? I'm so ready for the dark side of Tampa. Wow, I just got goosebumps hearing you say that. Let's do it. Yep. So sometimes um, some crazy stuff happens in Tampa, maybe a smaller little town than New York and other places, but uh, some wild things happen here as well. I'm actually in downtown Tampa right now at the Bank of America building where on January 5th, 2002, one of those wild things took place. So at about 5 p.m., a boy, a 15 year old boy named Charles Bishop was learning to fly actually, he was taking his pilot's you know, lessons and all that stuff. And he stole a 2,400 pound Cessna plane from the airfield a little bit outside of downtown Tampa, right? He flies this thing and he crashes into this building, the Bank of America building between the 28th and 29th floors, killing himself instantly. What made it more interesting, I guess, is that he was actually attempting in 2002 to recreate the previous attacks of 9-11, 2001 in New York. He actually left a note behind actually uh, sympathizing with Osama bin Laden. I don't know if you guys have heard of that guy, uh, a lot of people in the United States and in Tampa have kind of forgotten about this event because I guess never forget doesn't apply to this one. Uh, but also what's interesting is that this kid leading up to this whole thing had kind of shown some signs of being a little bit, uh, you know, I guess disturbed. Uh, one of his teachers described him as a geek, which uh, if one of your teachers describes you as a geek, you're in trouble. So because of this crash, the mother actually attempted to sue Roche Pharmaceuticals because they create a, a, a product known as Accutane. It's a, uh, a pimple, pimple cream, well, a pimple pill, uh, the magic pimple pill. It takes your zits away, you know, you take this thing. And one of the things they said was that it caused him to go kind of crazy, uh, which is quite a claim. You know, side effects may include nausea, uh, shortness of breath, and uh, mimicking Islamic militant terrorists. Uh, apparently, that was kind of their claim. Didn't work. It was a $70 million lawsuit, got tossed right out. Uh, because of this case, too, uh, they actually uh, changed the rules for flying with minors. He was actually a year under uh, what he would have needed uh, in age to fly solo, but they changed a lot of things, made it a little more difficult, a little tighter restrictions. Uh, and also, the day that this happened, because everyone was so sensitive after 9-11 and all the regulations, everything were still up in the air, they floored all the flights in the area for an hour. Uh, keeping people in their planes, waiting to leave the tarmac, you know, upset, didn't know what was going on. Uh, so those are the people who are in the future going to, you know, probably lash out out of anger as well. They're creating some future terrorists there because uh, they're probably angry and all that stuff, missing their connections, you know. People get upset. So all those things happened because uh, Charles Bishop decided to mimic, you know, Osama bin Laden. And also when he was flying, uh, they actually, the Coast Guard sent planes to try to bring him down. 
with the international symbol for, uh, for bringing your plane down, which is uh, this, you know? They're like, hey, buddy, bring your plane down. Uh, didn't listen, flew it right into this building. Yeah, well, um, I used to work right here. I used to work right down the street here. I used to work the next block at that time, actually. Did you know that? I used to work at a law office right over here. Wow. Uh, yeah, isn't that crazy? Yep. They were, uh, you know, I know I had my days where I, you know, yep. wanted to steal a plane. Anyways, all this stuff happened here uh, at the, the Bank of America building, downtown Tampa. Pretty crazy stuff. You think Tampa's a sleepy little, you know, Gulf Coast town? Not the case sometimes, but uh, yeah. All right, what do you think, Lucy? Should we uh, keep moving? I think so. Let's do it. Yeah. <laughs> So the waters around Tampa Bay have always been a little bit dangerous, a lot of traffic there, so stuff happens. Uh, I'm actually here in uh, the little park leading up to the Sunshine Skyway Bridge uh, at the United States Coast Guard Cutter Blackthorn Memorial. <clears throat> it is to commemorate the cutter that actually had an unfortunate accident here in 1980. So the story of the ship is that it was a 180 foot cutter that was actually commissioned by the Coast Guard in 1944. Had some important missions, it actually was in charge of breaking up the ice in the Great Lakes. Uh, so uh, materials from the Midwest could be transported around uh, to build all kinds of wartime uh, machinery that needed to go over to Europe during World War II. Then it bounced around for a few decades after that. Uh, and then the last place it was based out of was Galveston, Texas. And it came here into Tampa uh, to be refitted. And in 1980, it was leaving Tampa after being refitted with a crew. Half of it was brand new to the ship. So on January 28th, 1980, uh, it was actually leaving Tampa Bay in this channel, kind of past around the, where the Sunshine Skyway is now, and it was uh, heading out as the Kazakhstan, a passenger ship, uh, was heading uh, the other direction, right? And it was passing on the uh, port side. Yeah, that's right, very fancy. You know, got the lingo down. Passing port side, right? So it was passing port side, so it had to move out of the way a little bit on its starboard side, and it did. It went over, starboard, yep, uh, which is kind of the right. It's to the right, basically. Uh, and it moved out of the way and then came back and it kind of went into the center. Kazakhstan's long gone, but then there's another ship called the Capricorn. It was a freight ship that was coming down that way. Uh, it was constrained by draft. That's another fancy term, meaning that it's such a huge ship that's already in motion. To set it off a of motion would have been a problem, would have been dangerous because it could have got ran aground. It would have been a bit, total mess. So it's moving and it's kind of basically what ends up happening is it kind of sees it too late. Uh, when it does see it, it kind of starts turning to, to go to the other side and crashed head on pretty much uh, to the tip, to the, to the bow. <laughs> there you go. Uh, and what ended up happening, the big problem though, however, uh, as the uh, captain was getting everything ready for evacuation, they weren't even able to sound the entire alarms and do the intercom sort of thing because the anchor from the Capricorn went in to the ship. The anchor went through and then, it, and then as the Capricorn went by, the anchor kind of started to pull and started pulling the boat with it, and eventually pulled the boat over and capsized the entire uh, Blackthorn. That's when things turned ugly. 27 were saved, but uh, 23 people died. This was the worst Coast Guard disaster in history, second only to The Guardian starring Ashton Kutcher and Kevin Costner. Uh, pretty bad. Uh, but it actually, there were, some, there were some bright spots. There was a man named William Flores, who um, they named a ship after later on, because he, heroically, only 19 years old, this guy stays behind and is, and is handing out life jackets. He secures open the life jacket compartment with his own belt and stays behind as the boat capsized to give life jackets and make sure everyone got life jackets and he ends up uh, drowning, uh, which is pretty, pretty sad, but uh, you know, pretty, pretty cool story for a 19 year old. I know when I was 19 years old, I was, you know, busy trying to pose as a guy named Justin to get into bars, uh, you know, a nice, fake Florida ID, uh, you know, I don't know if I should be saying this out loud, but some, some cool stories uh, of what happened. But after this actual disaster, the Coast Guard changed a lot of its protocols and a lot of its policies. It required more uh, substantive training. It required uh, emergency drills immediately after people are, are put on board as new uh, uh, crew members. Uh, so it did change things for the better for the Coast Guard as well. The actual ship, the, the uh, Blackthorn, was, was salvaged, uh, but they ended up sinking it off of uh, Tampa here for a reef. So you can actually go scuba diving and check it out. Uh, kind of dark, you know, a little bit of dark tourism there. If you're down there, you know, just scuba diving with your GoPro and everything, and uh, you know, it's a disaster. They kill a lot of people, but hey, that's what the Titanic is, I guess, too. 
Uh, all right, now I'm definitely digressing. Well, what did you think of that, uh, Lucy? What did you think of the story? Dark. 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 But you know what? I warned you guys. I warned you. This is going to be a dark video. These are important stories. A lot of people who live here in Tampa don't even know these stories. So you got to know them. But uh, aside from it being dark, what did you think? Amazing. Just inspiring and incredible. Yeah. Thanks. You didn't have to laugh when you finished saying that. Uh, would have been more convincing, but I take it anyway. Should we go to the next spot? Let's go. Let's go. All right, so I'm here next to Tampa Bay. I'm here next to good old Tampa Bay uh, to tell you that in Florida, in Tampa, sometimes you get these stories of crazy murders. Uh, shock, that's a shock I'm sure for all of you. Uh, but I'm here next to Tampa Bay to tell you the story of the guy who killed a woman and her two daughters while they were on vacation. Okay, anyways, on June 4th, 1989, the bodies of Joan Rogers and her two daughters, 17 and 14, were found here in Tampa Bay. They had been tied to cinder blocks, uh, and they'd been submerged for 50 to 60 hours. Uh, the mystery begins of who these people are. Uh, this story is publicized, and a housekeeper at the Days Inn, uh, a little further away, uh, talks to the officials saying that there was a family that had gone missing a few days before. The housekeeper at the Days Inn kind of started this whole chase, uh, yeah, that's right, the Days in official hotel of uh, multiple murders everywhere. Uh, a little branded content, there you go. And it's pinpointed to a woman named Joan Rogers and her two daughters, and so they begin looking for more clues. And they find, eventually, a few days later, their car. Actually, at a boat landing uh, nearby, and inside the car was a map with directions written to that boat landing. Uh, that's all they had to go on at that point. So then it becomes a matter of finding out who did this. Uh, who could have done it? The first lead was going back to Wilshire, Ohio, where the daughters and the mother came from, and the father, who they had left behind to go on this little vacation. Part of the reason they went on this vacation was because the father's brother had actually assaulted the 17-year-old uh, previously and gone to jail, right? So they thought maybe he did something from behind prison walls. They investigated that lead to find nothing. And obviously, the father was distraught, and he's also cleared. So then they turn up nothing, right? So then they keep looking. They use the handwriting on the map to try to follow that, but they had nothing to go on. So they try to publicize the handwriting, but that's all they had. In October 1989, further down, they actually were encount encountered a woman who claimed to be assaulted by a man on a boat in near Tampa Bay, in a blue and white boat, and he had threatened to throw her overboard tied to a cinder block. She was able to get away. Uh, she set, gave them more clues, and that clue, one of the clues, was that he was an aluminum salesman. The other clue was the blue and white boat. They continue to look, continue to look, and they turn up nothing. By 1992, in February 1992, the police said, look, we got six months. They gave the detectives six months to solve the case, uh, and they were going to close it because it was coming up cold. Anyways, those detectives are, they are completely, like, they're, they gotta, they gotta solve this, right? So one of the things they did was in July, they posted billboards all over Tampa with the handwriting sample from that map. A woman, a couple days after having posted that billboard, contacts the officials and says she has a contract with the similar handwriting for aluminum. She gives it and faxes it, so, faxes it over to the actual officials and they pinpoint Oba Chandler. And they look for this guy and look for this guy and they're having trouble finding him. He's married with a kid and they eventually get him at a gas station coming back into Florida. It's pretty wild. They take him in and they actually pinpoint his phone records to the boat that day at that time, which is quite wild. You know, he says that he was out checking a gas line or something. The jury doesn't buy it. It took them 90 minutes to find him guilty of murder. He's sentenced to death and he goes to get lethal injection in 2011 uh, and in his 17 years in prison, not one person visited him. It's kind of sad, actually, uh, to be honest, but uh, he had a pretty long rap sheet. As a juvenile, you know, he had been in jail many times for robbery, uh, sexual assault, all kinds of things, and as also as well as an adult. Uh, and he, like I said, sentenced to death, and when they asked him if he had any last words, he said no. But he did leave behind a note saying, you are executing a innocent man, an innocent man. Uh, which, which the, you know, the DA was like, yeah, right, buddy, whatever, you're, you're guilty as hell. 
But yeah, pretty pretty wild and uh, you know, set in motion right here, Tampa Bay. What do you think of that story, Lucy? Crazy, but wasn't his last meal two salami sandwiches? Two salami sandwiches is correct. He had two salami sandwiches, which uh, you know, that's a that's an offense that that should necessitate a lethal injection just by itself. Last meal, two salami sandwiches, what's wrong with you? That's a serial killer meal for if I've ever heard one. Uh, salami sandwiches, the official serial killer. That's right. It's two salami sandwiches is the official meal of serial killers everywhere. Uh, but yeah, pretty pretty crazy story. The Oba Chandler story here in Tampa, Florida. <laughs> Okay, in Tampa, because it's a port city, you got lots of waterways, you got lots of bridges. Pretty cool. But because of that, you're also gonna have some, uh, some accidents. I'm actually here next to the uh, Sunshine Skyway Bridge in a rest stop here. Um, yeah, it's a little, rest stops can be a little weird, but this one's got uh, a memorial called the Summit Venture Memorial. Same actual rest stop where the Blackthorn Memorial is. Two memorials in the same rest stop. You know, I guess it is Florida. That's where you put them, I guess. But uh, more importantly, it's the story of the Summit Venture. Ooh. And it happened right here. So the story is on May 9th, 1980, the Summit Venture, this giant freight ship, was actually navigating the waters here next to the bridge. Now, the bridge was opened in 1954, but it was originally opened as a cantilever bridge. Anyways, this guy's driving, the, the captain of the ship is named John Laro, and he's driving the boat, and it's unfortunately very foggy. It's like 7.33 a.m. He's just driving, 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 and when it's too late, he realizes he's about to slam into the bridge. He tries to correct himself, too late, slams into the actual bridge, one of the pylons. The whole thing falls down. The whole cantilever falls into the water. Uh, eventually, uh, eight cars fall in the water, not just the ones that were on the actual portion of the bridge, but also people who just drive, drive in or drove in. Uh, I can speak in past tense, I know. Anyways, a bunch of cars drive in, a passenger bus drives in. It's because it was so foggy. People couldn't see. So you can imagine at 7.30 in the morning, you're driving to work, you know, in, in Florida as you do. You're listening to the type of music you listen to, something like, you know, if you like pina coladas, and you know, all of a sudden you see the radio in the water, you know, kind of wild. Although some people did survive. This man named Wesley McIntyre was 57 years old. He drove into the water uh, with his truck, but he hit the boat first and then he went in the water, it sank. But because he was in the Navy for 40 years, he knew how to navigate in the water and he was able to get himself out of his truck and out of the water, so he saved his life. But 35 people died, pretty wild. All that happened right here. Uh, the man, the captain, uh, they tried to push him uh, to get him in trouble, all that stuff, but he was actually exonerated, acted reasonably. Uh, there was just tons of trouble. Uh, it was very foggy, but he, it scarred him. He actually gave up uh, become, being a fit, uh, boat captain. He retired up to the Northeast and, uh, you know, taught at a maritime college. And it sounds like at the beginning of a movie, you know, that someone shows up at his farm or something and he's cleaning a, f a boat part. And they're like, I'm looking for a captain, John Laro. And he's like, he's not here. He died years ago. What do you want? You know, that was pretty good acting, right, Lucy? That was so good. Yeah, thanks. Uh, but yeah, it's uh, all happened here. And actually in 1987, they redid the bridge and they made it this huge, giant thing. It's like 430 feet tall, uh, very beautiful. And they named it the Bob Graham Sunshine Skyway Bridge, which is named after Bob Graham, who was a politician here in Florida. He was a governor, he was a senator, he was a, you know, uh, uh, representative. Uh, he went to Harvard Law School. Uh, and this is kind of interesting, Lucy. He actually was famous because he, he actually took on the jobs of lots of his constituents for at least eight hours uh, a full work day so he could understand their, their like jobs and stuff better. Like eight hours a week? No, a whole eight hour full, eight hour work day he spent doing lots of jobs. Like he was like a... Every he, day? No, not every day. Like he did a whole full work day. Like he was a pooper scooper for a day. He was did a he teacher. Work at Hooters? He didn't work at Hooters because then he would have understood the constituency way better. <laughs> And you know, Florida is very famous for its adult entertainment. So maybe he was a, you know, maybe he was a stripper too. Is that uh, like a correct term, appropriate stripper? I don't even, I can't keep up anymore. You know, <laughs> uh, exotic okay. dancer. There you go, exotic dancer. But anyways, uh, yeah, all kind of happened right here. The the ship, the Summit Venture, was actually sunk uh, uh, in 2010. Uh, so it's gone too. It's down there entertaining a bunch of fishies. Uh, yeah. I think off the coast of Vietnam somewhere. Nam. But that's it. Uh, you know, pretty pretty nice bridge. Pretty cool. Um, what do you think, Lucy? Should we, should we keep moving? Yeah, let's hit the Waffle House. 
That's at the Waffle House. That's the, uh, the, Florida, the Florida State motto, actually. That's on the license plates. Uh, what do you, uh, we should move then, right? Do okay. you, you have any questions? No, I, 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 it's so dark. Okay. I can't even handle it. <laughs> <laughs> nice. All right, let's keep moving. <laughs> Yeah, we made it to the end, guys. This is the last stop. I know I scared you. Sorry. Uh, this is the dark side. You should have seen your faces. Uh, but we made it to the end. I'm here, uh, you know, next to a little canal. Lots of canals here near Tampa. Uh, we made it to the end. We covered a lot, guys. We, we went through the story, uh, two stories, dealing with the Sunshine Skyway. We talked about the Summit Venture. We talked about the, the, the Cutter, the Coast Guard Cutter. Huh? We talked about the Blackthorn. That was pretty cool, too. We talked about the, you know, the Bank of America thing. That was interesting and kind of weird. But uh, all of it, weird and dark. Ooh. Lucy, what'd you think? Ooh, so dark. Nice. Uh, now, guys, if you enjoyed it, please check out the Patreon. That's a huge help. That's how we fund these things. There's extras on there. We cover them at the beginning. Podcasts, recommendations, videos, extra stuff. Uh, AMAs monthly, all that crud. So check that out, please. That's a huge help. That's how I fund these things, baby. Um, and also, like and subscribe, so easy, huh? So easy a giant pelican thing could do it, <laughs> you know? Uh, anyways, guys, that's the end. We made it to the end, really great. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go uh, hang out in one of these houses here, uh, you know, and uh, <clears throat> make some margaritas. Right? Yep. Let's see. Okay, you're getting anxious because of the lights going down? Yes. It's part of the charm. All right, now there's another one. Very romantic. Okay. Uh, anyways, that's the end of the video. Hope you guys liked it. Dark side of Florida, baby. See y'all later. Sick.